Good morning. Welcome to King of Kings on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I always look forward to this Sunday because today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Beautiful picture that we embrace, and yet, to a certain degree, it's a picture that we're not all that familiar with. Not many of us have spent time with shepherds or around sheep. To us, taking care of sheep is putting them inside of a fenced-in area with more than enough grass and water. But that was not the picture from Jesus' day. There were no fenced-in areas with large, lush, green fields. Water was not everywhere, and so the sheep were absolutely dependent on that shepherd for absolutely everything. That's the picture for us. We are completely dependent on our shepherd for every aspect of life. That thought's going to guide our worship. We'll begin with the first hymn, hymn number 804, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given, a, given us His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now in the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first lesson is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 13, beginning with the 15th verse, reading through verse 33, selected verses. The Apostle Paul preaches the good news that the Messiah, in fact, had arrived. He's the Savior for all sinners, the conqueror of death, witnessed by his followers. After the reading from the law of the, and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them saying, Brothers, if you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. Brothers, children of Abraham and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days, he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised to our fathers, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 23, found on page 6 of your worship folder.
The second lesson is recorded in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Jesus is both lamb and shepherd, and he saved his flock by laying down his life for the flock. He was slain, and yet he is alive, and because of that, he is worthy to sit on the throne. Because he's our good shepherd, he leads us, his flock, to that place where none of the consequences of sin will ever be able to touch us ever again. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Alleluia. Please rise for the gospel. The gospel lesson and also our sermon text is recorded in the gospel of John chapter 10, beginning with the 22nd verse. Jesus told his enemies that the reason they didn't recognize him and his voice was because they weren't his sheep, and because of that, they would perish. But his disciples, who know his voice and are known by the shepherd, follow his voice, and because of that, no one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. They came to the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's columnade. The Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Join me in confessing your Christian faith. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed on pages 8 and 9 of your worship folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day. It's hymn number 552, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Grace and mercy and peace belong to you. They come to you from God our Father, from our Lord, our Savior, our Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. You're members of the flock of the Good Shepherd. 
You know enough if someone calls you a sheep that it probably wasn't a compliment. What they're saying to you is that you don't think for yourself. You blindly follow the advice of someone without ever giving it a second thought. You're not at all a critical thinker. But I guess I'm thinking today, isn't it true that all of us are sheep to some extent? All of us follow one set of principles or another. All of us listen to one voice or another. All of us live according to a set of principles. I've never met someone who is absolutely independent every issue. It's rare when you find someone who thinks outside of the box, and that, in fact, that's why we have that expression. All of us, to one degree or another, are sheep. Take the issue of COVID, for example. I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing about it, but this past week at our pastor's conference, every single one of the essays dealt with one aspect of COVID in our response as pastors or as a church, hoping that we could learn from this experience and maybe do some things better if there should be a next time. I guess I was a little bit concerned about the discussion that was going to follow those essays because we're all so dug in. We all have one camp that we belong to. We're absolutely divided on the issue. For example, it was a good thing that we shut down as a society so that we could flatten the curve. Or, we should have kept the economy open for business the entire time. It was dumb. Masks are effective in preventing the spread. Masks don't do a single thing to stop it. Just look at the box. The box in which those masks come, it says it does not prevent the spread of COVID. We're either vaccine people or anti-vax people. And no matter what, we think that the other side, the people on the other side of the issue are absolute sheep. Not doing any critical thinking whatsoever, just soaking up whatever Fox News or talk radio has to say, just sopping up whatever Twitter puts out there, whatever the White House says is absolute truth. You see what I mean? All of us, to one degree or another, are sheep. We follow a voice. We walk according to a path. We live according to a set of principles. So the real question is not, who are the sheep, and who are the independent thinkers? The real question is, whose sheep are we? And we can ask that question not just about politics. We can ask it about religion, too. In fact, that's the question Jesus would have us ask as we read these words today in the Gospel of John. Whose sheep will we be? Well, Jesus walk, was walking through a very ornate part of the temple with these huge columns, Solomon's Colonnade. And he was doing what rabbis do. He was walking, and as he was walking, he was teaching. And the people around him asked a question. How long will you keep us in dispense, in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Well, the problem wasn't that Jesus hadn't told them Everything in his ministry from beginning to end screamed out that he was the Christ. Their problem was that he had not told them in plain enough terms so that they could trap him. But he had told them. He did things that only God could do. He changed water into wine. He healed a royal official's son. He took a man who was unable to walk for 38 years at the pool of Bethesda, and he told him, pick up your mat and go home. Jesus did things that only the Christ could do, and he said things that only the Christ could say. 
whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. It will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And when the woman asked Jesus this question, I know that the Messiah called Christ is coming, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. He told his enemies that the Son of Man was worthy of equal honor together with the Father. He was the bread of life that came down from heaven, and whoever ate of that bread would live forever. Did you catch the one in our text? Right at the very end, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Jesus was clear. Jesus was telling them from beginning to end, in no uncertain terms, I am the Christ. And he says, if you had really been following me and listening to my words and believing them, then you'd know, I did tell you. I did tell you that I am the Christ, but you do not believe. And the reason they didn't believe, Jesus says, is because you are not my sheep. Did you notice that Jesus doesn't say, you aren't sheep? He says, you're not my sheep. They didn't want to listen to his voice. They didn't want to follow his teachings. They didn't want to live according to the path that he laid out for them. The last thing they wanted was to make themselves dependent on Jesus for life and salvation with God forever in heaven for forgiveness. They didn't want any part of that, but they were sheep. They were sheep following a voice, following the voice of their own logic that said, obedience to the law, that's the way you get in good with God. They were listening to the voices of the people around them who praised them for their commitment to obedience to God's law and to his teachings. They were most definitely sheep following the voice of a shepherd. But they were not Jesus' sheep following the voice of the good shepherd. What about you? Whose sheep are you? The easy answer to that question is we're, we're sheep of the good shepherd. After all, that's why we're here today, right? We're here to listen to our shepherd's voice. We're here to know our shepherd better and even more importantly than that, to be known by him. We're committed to following the path of righteousness that he's laid out for us. The path that leads us all the way through this life and into life eternal. That's why we're here. We want to be his sheep. We want to listen to his voice. We want to follow his path, but isn't it true that the, we want the opposite too? We want to be accepted by the people around us who don't listen to Jesus' voice. None of us wants to be ridiculed. None of us wants to be ostracized. And because of that, at times we're willing to silence Jesus' voice and instead substitute the voice of people who will not follow him. We want to follow a different path. We want to follow the path that our own sinful, selfish desires lay out for us. And so we're willing at times to silence Jesus' voice in order to satisfy those desires. Instead of listening to the good shepherd's voice, there are times that you and I will listen instead to the father of lies, the wolf, Satan himself, who wants to destroy us and tear us apart, and he's always assuring us, I've got a better way, an easier way, a more convenient way, a more fulfilling way. And then isn't it true also that instead of echoing the voice of the good shepherd in our own lives to our family and friends, sometimes fear, embarrassment, instead of mixed up priorities, ties our tongues and locks our lips and closes our mouth. 
Well, the simple reason for all of that is soul-destroying sin. But there's another aspect about this that I, I want to talk about just a little bit because I think it's helpful. I think there's part of us that wants to break Christianity down and to look at religion as nothing more than a set of principles, a how-to for life, a list of laws that we have to obey. We want sermons to be instructional series about how to get things done spiritually. We want the Bible to be a, a life for dummies manual. But if that's all religion and Christianity is, then we put ourselves on a path that always leads to an ugly, horrible place. Because that path that we lay out for us, if we're following a set of rules to get in good with God, well, then we subject ourselves to God's standards. God's standards of absolutely nothing less than total 100% perfection and righteousness. Without exception, if you're going to try to find your way on the path that leads to heaven by obedience, by doing the right thing, then you better be prepared to do it the right way every single time, without exception. And when you walk that path, well, then someone can easily snatch you out of the hand of the Father. The wolf is waiting there to rip you apart. He wants to prevent you from that great pasture that God has given us in heaven. So isn't it imperative then for us to ask the question, whose sheep will we be? The problem is, how do we know which is the right voice to follow? How do we know who truly is the good shepherd? Because there's part of us that will fall for Satan's lies. Well, Jesus tells us today that the good shepherd isn't only the good shepherd because of what he says. It's more than just do what I say, just trust me. Jesus says he's the good shepherd not only because of what he says, but also because of what he does. He said it right there in verse 25. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. And I guess I don't really like that translation because the word miracles seems to direct our attention back to the healings, the miracle of changing water into wine and all the other amazing things Jesus did. Yes, those miracles were pointing to Jesus as the Christ, but I don't think he was necessarily talking about those things. I think he was talking about the things that he was about to do. Literally translating that verse, He's saying, the works I do in my Father's name give witness to me. The things I'm about to do show you who I actually am. You see, Jesus is much more than just another voice saying, just trust me. He's a Savior who says, watch what I do for you, because his voice is the only voice that leads us to a cross. His voice is only the voice that leads us to the cross where a God-man pours out his blood after living a life of righteousness and holiness. His voice is the only one that directs us to his righteousness, not ours. His voice leads us to an empty grave where he says, I have conquered death once and for all. Your death is only sleep. It's the pathway, the doorway to eternal life. His voice is the only one that leads us to an empty tomb with the assurance, I have risen. And because of that, your grave has no power to hold you any longer and as I have risen, so also you too will one day rise to live in perfect peace with your Creator, your Redeemer, and your Sanctifier. Why? Because the Good Shepherd poured out God's blood to wash away your guilt 
to take away your sin, to give you his holiness by faith so that he can lead you all the way to heaven. That's why we listen to his voice. That's why we follow this shepherd's lead, the shepherd who was also the lamb of sacrifice, who lived and died so that we might live with him forever. Whose sheep will we be? Because all of us are sheep. And there are all kinds of voices out there leading us down all kinds of different paths that in the end lead to our destruction. But only one voice, only one voice leads us to heaven. Only one voice, the voice of the good shepherd, assures us that we will never perish. Only one voice gives us the confidence that even in this life, no one and nothing can snatch us out of the Father's hand. So listen to him. Listen to him. Follow him down the path that he lays out for you and live in him. Live in him today. Live in him today, right here and right now, and know that at the end of that path, you will live with him forever. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that transcends all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. This morning during our worship service, we are going to gather an offering. It's our chance to say thank you to God for his blessings of forgiveness and the promise of heaven. If you've already placed an offering in the offering plate, just pass the plate down to others. If you are our guest, please don't feel obligated to give, but if you'd like to give, you certainly may do so.
Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed us in so many ways. For all the blessings of his body and life, we give you thanks and praise. Lord Jesus, you have given us life in abundance through your suffering and death and resurrection. Thank you for your salvation so great and free. We pray today for all who lead your church on earth, for all pastors, district and synod leaders, that through their work our good shepherd might be glorified in all that is said and done. We left up before you those who are sick, those who are in nursing homes, and those who are in hospitals. Be with them and give them what they need in body and soul. We also commend into your care those afflicted with cancer or other illnesses. Give them courage to face this day and give them hope for tomorrow. <laughs> we pray for those who serve in our armed forces that you might be their shield and defender. We include in our prayers this morning Stephanie Nelson's cousin's baby. Her cousin had a baby in the month of April. He's struggling every single day to live. Dear Lord, we place this child into your hands. And as we struggle, we give you thanks for the sacrament of holy baptism by which you brought him into your family of believers and connected him to, to Jesus to the promise of forgiveness and the hope of heaven. We simply pray, pray your will be done. Because you are the good shepherd, we know that you will care for him in the way that's best for him. If it's your will, give him the strength to thrive. If it is your, not your will, we ask that you would take him to the greener pastures of heaven. Comfort, strengthen, and enable the family to endure and give them the, the hope that they will one day be reunited as part of your flock in heaven. We also pray and get thanksgiving for mothers. It's been you, Lord, who from our mother's arms have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love. In our mother's endless hours of caring for us, watching over us, and praying for us, you were holding us in your arms. We give thanks to you for the mothers you've given us. We ask that you would richly bless them according to their needs and make them strong to carry out their responsibilities. Just as you gather your children under the shelter of your wings, give mothers the same desire to protect and comfort those entrusted to their care. Lord Jesus, we rejoice with those who rejoice and we weep with those who weep. For those who rejoice, may it be a foretaste of eternity. For those who weep, may they know the consolation of your love. Into your hands, our good shepherd, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. And we join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
You may be seated. We'll join in hymn 757, Gracious Savior, Gentle Shepherd. Please stand. We like sheep have gone astray, and now we are threatened by danger on every side. Great shepherd of the sheep, we like sheep have gone astray, and now are in the midst of chaos and disorder. Great shepherd of the sheep, We like sheep have gone astray, and now we look to the future for hope. Great Shepherd of the Sheep. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, hymn number 553, The Lord's My Shepherd.
Good morning, welcome once again. Welcome especially to our guests and visitors. If you haven't already done so, please take a minute, sign the friendship register and pass it down in, to the others in your row so we can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, I'm gonna answer this question once rather than 70 times. I was at a pastor's conference this last week and I arrived a little bit early to play a round of golf. Uh, on my way to the clubhouse, I stepped over a hose with my left foot, hooked the hose with my right foot, and tried to stop myself with my left leg, at which point something sprained or tore or something, I don't know. So I had that thought, uh, this is the most unathletic I've ever looked in my entire life, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm hobbling around. Um, just a couple of announcements. First of all, I'm going to try a few different things uh, going forward in the next couple of months here. We're going to try them out here when there's not such a large crowd just to see if maybe things go a little bit better. Uh, ask for your, your cooperation, understanding with those things. Also, uh, I think that Stephanie has an announcement as well. <laughs> I think you said thank you, Gimpy, huh? Yeah? Gimpy. Gimpy. just in case somebody doesn't know what the bags are for. So, as you're traveling around, driving down the street, you come to a stop at a stoplight, and some guy just pulled up in front of it, just said, hey, listen, if you need help, please give them one of this bag, or one of these bags. There's energy foods in there, water, sanitizer. There is also a meditation to the business card to give you some great information on how to save your life. Okay, anyone else have announcements? Oh, if you would like to put some bags together on your own if we're out or you're not able to come and get some more, we still have the list of items for the bags out there. You can pick one up, put together bags. I think we can even improvise a little bit, too, if there's just something special that you want to get them. Feel free to do that. And again, there's a couple purposes for that, obviously just giving people what they need, helping them out with things they need, but what we really want them to be is conversation starters for you to, to talk about the Good Shepherd, uh, to talk about how He cares for us. He provides for us sometimes in ordinary ways just by giving a bag of, of stuff that we need. He uses His people to do that, and we're glad to do that for you, something like that. Other announcements? Okay, have a wonderful